Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Faraz Patankar, uh, who is coming from Railway. So, uh, Faraz, for folks who aren't familiar with you, do you want to give us a bit of a background on uh, on who you are, what you're about? Yep, sure. Um, so, hi, uh, I'm Faraz. I have been doing like web dev for maybe six six years now. Um, Dropped out of college, went to a coding boot camp. That's how I started learning how to code. Then uh, that was like a Ruby on Rails boot camp. So that's what I learned mm -hmm. initially. Um, went went back to India after that. Started working at an ed tech startup. Um, okay. Again, like Ruby on Rails, JS, jQuery stuff. Uh, soon after, like I moved to a service based company, which is like a very tiny startup because I thought I wanted to get into that sort of work. Uh, realized while I was there that it isn't for me because you're kind of okay. building the same thing over and over again. And then mm. people want to see if their product works and then they hire their own team. So I felt like I wasn't like learning much as just building like oh. authentication payment gateway and then next project authentication payment gateway. Um, so didn't, didn't enjoy that too much. Um, soon after that, I went remote. So this was like, I think late 2018. Um, okay. with that, I started like nomading, traveling around the world at the same time. So Very did cool. like a couple of months in Bali, Thailand, Turkey, Serbia, and so on. Um, so were you, that job, were you doing that yeah. as the, um, as like the, like straight up live out of a suitcase, just kind of drop your lease and, and go do wherever you wanted to be? Yes. Yep. So God, I, I was, I was at home. Yeah. I was at home living with my mom and I was like, I think I'm going to go to Bali. And she thought I was kidding. And she's like, sure. And I bought my flight the next day. And yeah, I was I was very nervous at the beginning, but I had a friend who was already there, which made things easier. Um, luckily, like the teams I've always worked with have been small, uh, only worked at startups and they've all been very flexible. So as long yeah. as like I show up for like two meetings a week, I can just do my work whenever and no one asks uh, too that's many questions. Fun. It's, yeah, it's the same at Railway as well. We like meet on Monday and meet on Friday. Um, so yeah, so did that's that super fun. Till, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, so, uh, coincidentally, I actually did the same thing. I, I lived out of a suitcase for, for two years. Uh, my partner and I did like Thailand, Vietnam. We were around parts of Europe. Um, it was, it was super like, y'all, if you're single, no kids, no pets, uh, do like, do it. If you've ever thought about traveling, like it is so much fun. Um, yep. yeah, and it, it's, sorry. I, and, and now I've interrupted you. So leave and you'll continue. figure the rest out. <laughs> Just leave your apartment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it, especially yeah. if you, if you're in that like low responsibility stage where you, you just don't have a lot of like permanent commitments. I, I was really scared when I did, I did this in 2014. I was in my like twenties. <laughs> um, and I was like, this is going to blow up my whole life. And I left and my whole life improved because I was having all the things that like, I, I would regret that if I didn't try it. Right. And, and I had these opportunities that, you know, I like, I've since made some more permanent commitments. Like I bought a house. I couldn't just give up a lease and leave. And, and, you know, I think if I hadn't done it, I'd be sitting around going, man, but what if I did? What if I, and, and I don't know, I, I, I very much believe in a don't die with regrets kind of lifestyle. So, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, really glad that I did. And if you feel like that's something you want to try and you've got the opportunity go do it. It's so much fun. Yep, for sure. Don't want to wake up when you're 60 and be like, what if, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, you, so you I, know so I much interrupted well, you to, like to share my own story. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that's okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, was doing that till about like when COVID happened. Um, mm. So I was supposed to like fly to Colombia and do South America for like six months. Uh, ended up staying in Miami till my US visa expired and I had to leave. So I flew to Bahrain where my parents live, <laughs> ended up living there till they wouldn't let me extend the visa anymore. Um, nice. Flew to Dubai and turns out you can keep extending your visa in Dubai for however long right. you like. Yeah, so I've, I've been here since then. Uh, made a couple of trips here and there. Uh, but yeah, been here for about a year and a half. Uh, but like <laughs> going, I, I guess I missed out all the career paths in that explanation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I did another ed tech startup in between where we built like a pretty cool, similar to Ping actually, we built like a 
uh, in-house classroom solution. So like teachers oh, could cool. teach students how to code live, uh, which is also like, I think the same stack that Ping uses, which is like uh, React, TypeScript, and Agora uh, for the SDK. Um, okay. Joined Railway around a year ago. I think it will be a year next week. Uh, been there since I do like full stack, but very front end focused. Um, oh, so you, okay. mostly TypeScripts, a little work in Go, which our uh, Cly is also written in. Um, but yeah, mostly on the TS React side of things. Um, nice. I guess outside of work, I really enjoy coding. So I do a lot of side projects. Um, mm -hmm. On like in in like the travel and visa space, so I have one which a bunch of people use called long term visas, which tells you like okay. how you can relocate to another country. So like I'm on one of those visas, oh. which is listed on that site. So like a remote work visa, which allows you to stay in Dubai for one year. You don't need a sponsor; you right. can sponsor yourself and so on. So that's one. I'm working on a new one, which is like called Lil, Lil Flights. So it's like flights, uh, but a little easier on your wallet. So you can like <laughs> find cheap flights and. Uh, but high quality flights at the same time, right? Sure, yeah. And when I'm not at my computer, I'm making a mess in the kitchen, trying to cook stuff up or like experimenting with coffee. Um, mm. Yeah, these days doing like cold brew tonics and stuff because it's really hot here. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, I got to say, for us, we, we have very similar lifestyles, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think um, I'm one of the very few people who watched your, I think, only sort of cooking learn with Jason. I, or did I <laughs> imagine it? Yeah, the the um, the the cooking shows. We are uh, we're talking about how we can bring those back. Actually, so for for folks who aren't familiar, my partner Marissa and I did uh, at the beginning of the pandemic some like weekend brunch streams where we would just cook breakfast together. And stream it and kind of, you know, try recipes from from our friends. And uh, that's actually how we learned uh, Chance Strickland, who was on the show last week, last week, the week before. Um, he has a recipe for biscuits. And we, we made the biscuits on the stream. And Chance was there yelling at me because I wasn't folding fast enough. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And it's something that we want to bring back. We were having trouble with quality. And so we wanted to get a little bit more gear, which uh, if you have followed along with my journey, I have. I have too much gear now. Um, so, <laughs> which Chris Biscardi, who is uh, dangerously close to three years of subscribing, thank you very much, Chris, mm -hmm. uh, is my one of my chief enablers for <laughs> for uh, for buying more gear. So, thank you, Chris, for being the best bad influence someone could ask for. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Faraz, you are currently working at Railway. You said and. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, AJ, uh, Anthony is in the chat and super stoked, super stoked about Railway. I've seen a lot of people being hyped up about Railway. Can you maybe give us the high level pitch? What is Railway? Yep. Um, so Railway, like, I'll tell you why I joined Railway, right? Because I, I found it one morning and I applied the next, like the same day, I think, was because mm -hmm. it was one of those platforms where I could like, what we want is for users to come to Railway and only focus on building their app, right? We don't have to gotcha. want you to have to worry about like infrastructure, setting up alerts, um, setting up a database, uh, diagnosing your app and so on. Uh, we aren't like fully there yet, but we are moving towards that direction. Like we, okay. we want to help you build the app you want to build without worrying about the other things which we'll take care of for you. Um, and like... On first thought, it sounds very similar to maybe like a Heroku or a render, right? But the thing is, we want to help you across the entire cycle. So it's not just like okay. you give us your app and we deploy it. We also want you want to be there with you through the development phase. So you can use our CLI and you can do something like railway run node index.js, right? And then all your environment variables on railway, if you have a plugin in your project, those variables will be pushed into that node app. So you don't have to oh, nice. maintain like a separate end file or um, for, like if you create a development environment, those plugins or all the services you had in production, they are automatically added to that environment. If you open a PR, you get everything fresh with that PR, like everything's already there. So like things gotcha. are already working, you get a fresh database. If you have a test environment, you don't have to like clean up your database because you'll get like a fresh one for each PR. 
and so on. Totally. I got you. That's cool. So, so is this um, like, it, it, for folks who don't know, I work at Netlify and a lot of the things that you're listing here are features that I would consider to be uh, like some of my favorite features about Netlify. So it sounds like Railway is, is kind of taking a lot of the things that are great about building front ends on Netlify and bringing that to like the node apps, the more full stack kind of back end things. Yes, uh, we have been likened by a few users to like what Vercel and Netlify are for the front end. We are for like the mm -hmm. back end or full stack. Uh, nice. So that that is that is a comparison we get to hear a few times. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm always excited about uh, any way to make this a little bit easier. I've been um, I, I run a few back ends for various things like the the chat engine for Learn with Jason is a Node app that runs a, a GraphQL subscription. Um, there are a few other little backends that I run for, for different things that just need to be on all the time. Right. Um, and I used to have to run, I remember I had a, like a Linode server that was completely self-managed and I just didn't, yeah. I didn't know enough about how to do it. So it would always like crash on me. And then I'd have to figure out how to like SSH into the, the remote box and restart it and like try to find my logs, which I always set up log rotation one wrong and I'd lose things. And there are just a lot of these, these challenges that I'd hit. And then later I moved to DigitalOcean, which did some of the stuff, but not all of the stuff. So I'm still kind of self-managing. Um, and then I started to find services like, uh, like right now I use render.com, which it sounds like render mm -hmm. and, and railway are, are kind of solving the same space. Um, and, and so something like railway is, uh, is trying to take all of that stuff that I don't need to be an expert in and give me the ability to just do the thing that I'm interested in, which is like deploy this API. Um, yes. So I love that. I, I mean, I love to see that the, the dev space is moving toward this and, and, you know, like just hire an expert via software as a service, platform as a service, when it's not something that is critical to your application, like how you configure and deploy a container. In 99% of cases, it doesn't matter for your business, right? So why bother yep. learning all that stuff? Yep. Like you, you have um, to hire one less person. You have to focus on like ten less things. So it just, it just that's the... makes you makes it easier for you to get working on your product and get it out there, and Absolutely. keep like building more features, right? For, uh, exactly, right. Something in chat about your mic. I think there's like a slight crackle. Oh my god! Why? Why? Let me, let me just. You know, I've been having this issue where I don't know why my mic is. I'm just gonna disconnect the mic for a hot second. Please hold. Just trying to clean up the connection here a little bit. I don't know if if one of my cables got crushed in the move or or something, but uh, it's better now. The crackle it's better now. Maybe it was just a dirty yeah. like I hadn't connected it cleanly. Um, let's see how it goes. I will I will try not to shout. Try to keep us in the 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 good spot. <laughs> But uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's the only problem that I have. And if if it was the cable, maybe I just need a new cable. Um, but okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, what like what are some of the best use cases for railway, especially you know a lot of the folks who watch the show are I, I think would describe themselves as web developers or front end developers. Um, so we're not going to be deep in the back end, right? We're not. We're not like real. I, I would never call myself a back end engineer. I, I would say that I cheat using services like Railway and Render to become a full stack engineer. But really, I'm more like web front end, you know, the, the middle tier. That's that's where I really live. Um, so what's a what's a great like what are, where do you see Railway shine when people start deploying projects? Yeah, so uh, that's that's a good term there. I'll, I'll I'll steal that from you. The middle tier. I feel like I live there as well, and it, I struggle to explain. But like that 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 like puts things together pretty well. Uh, but I guess uh, what I'd say is uh, that's that's like a good crowd that can like use railway because again, like if you want to set up a database and mm -hmm. you're very front end focused, like you're either going to have to like install Postgres locally. And then if you want to maintain more than one database, you're like in trouble already, or you're going to have sure. to set up something like Docker, which you're not going to enjoy. Um, so then you can just use Railway, right? So anyone who needs like, uh, we offer like four plugins right now, MySQL, Redis, Mongo, and Postgres. 
So like if you need any of those, that's an immediate easy choice for you. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to deploy like a small backend server and then grow, uh, like grow it as you grow your product, we are a good choice. Uh, right now, I would say even if you're like a team user, uh, like you're a small team, maybe like a five to 10 person team, Railway is a great fit for you. Um, okay. especially because of how we've built like environments, like the concept of environments. Uh, so like, let's say you're hiring someone new and they want to get started. Like it, it's so much effort to get them set up locally and like get them going with the product. Whereas what we, and we use railway to build railway, right? So we have a project okay. called railway meta, which is what we use to develop railway locally. And anytime someone joins, they just create a new environment. So like when I joined, I just did like new environment dev for us import and envi- import uh, plug- uh, like all the environment variables from like dev jake because he was already mm-hmm. there and railway run uh, start uh, start command right and immediately nice. i can start developing locally i don't have to worry about like anything at all right um as for like what the use cases are we have a lot of people deploying like self hostable open source solutions which mm-hmm. is one of the things we are going to look at today because most like 99%, 90%, I guess, of them are like one click starters. So we've set them in a way that you give us like a couple of environment variables if needed, and you click a button and you have like umami, calenso, which is now I think cal.com, um, or something like Metabase. We have a starter for okay. Ghost, which is the blogging engine. Okay. So we get a lot of people deploying those things. We have a bunch of like, uh, People using like Discord bots, Telegram bots, uh, Slack bots, even I think. Um, and we have like a, I don't know, 40, 50 odd teams on the platform. Uh, okay. So these are like, like I said, like I think all sub 10 person teams. Uh, but they, they really like it because they can, again, like they're all startups who can focus on their core product and not worry about like having one person. I, uh, like last, just last month, I think someone moved uh, from uh, one of those, like we push your stuff on AWS, but like we manage it for you services because they were like, we don't sure. want to hire one person who, whose job is to like understand infra. And then every time someone has a question, they are dependent on that person, right? So if you're a team mm-hmm. that feels that, like, Railway is a good place for you to like come and build your product. Nice. Yeah, and, and you know, this is like something that I find really exciting about this particular era of uh, developer tooling is that I don't know when it shifted, but we seem to have shifted away from like, I as a developer need to turn all the knobs to I as a developer need to know where things roughly should live, but then most of the things are repeatable and deployable. And I think we owe a lot to, you know, uh, Docker containers and Kubernetes and and some of these systems that allow for for automated deployment and and scaling and stuff because these systems can be built on top of that that make things so much easier um, and and also just to the you know the the focus on productivity as opposed to completeness of understanding um, because like I don't care when I push a button on my computer how the signal from that key gets into the computer and makes a, a letter or number appear on the screen, right? It, it, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I just need to be able to do that. And, and I think that I feel the same way about like CDNs. I love that I am using a CDN and I very much want to do that. I don't particularly care how my domain name is configured to route traffic through the CDN back to my origin, handle failover and latency and all those other things that that I just like, I know they're important and I want them to exist, but I don't want to do it myself. Um, and I love, love, love that we're seeing more tools that sort of take that as the default stance. And they say, look, you're here to build something valuable for people who are going to use this site or this service. Don't spend time or money on things that don't matter. Like don't, you know, work on the value here. We'll handle this layer of, of stuff that is incidental, right? Um, and, and that's one of the, you know, that's why I ended up working at, at Netlify. I, it sounds like that's why you're working at railway is mm-hmm. that it just, it really does take this whole category of what I would call like toil or, or just busy work 
And it just like clears it away, lets an expert be the expert. And now I don't have to copy paste config off Stack Overflow because I legitimately have no understanding of how containers are deployed or scaled, right? Like that's what, that's my thing. <laughs> I love, it just makes me feel so much more powerful as a developer these days to be able to go and do that sort of work. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Just like uh, pointing out one thing you mentioned there, like uh, go build amazing things, right? Uh, mm -hmm. make people's lives easier and we will make your lives as a developer easier. So let us take care of that. Yeah. Um, and if, if y'all can hear the, the background, we are getting our, we, so we're, we're in a new house. As you can see, I, I finally got around to putting my lights up, still haven't decorated behind me. Um, but you may be able to hear that we have painters in the house today. So we've got uh, a little bit of background noise. Thank you for putting up with it. I, I swear we're very close to this, actually being back to 100% operational um, just a few more days. So <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you for putting up with all of the chaos in the background. Faraz, I, I appreciate you not uh, not just powering through as there's crackling paper and stuff in the background. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, specific use cases. So one of the things that uh, that we can do with Railway is self-hosted analytics. So you, you brought this up as a great use case. Um, and and self-hosted analytics are, are really interesting because like I, I do like to know, you know, who's reading what content or not even who, but like are people reading content on my site? Do, do certain articles get traffic? Are they useful? Are people, you know, do, do we see people like actually spending time on here and reading things? But what I don't particularly care about is I don't want to necessarily send that data to a third party. I don't necessarily want somebody to be off like using that data for advertising. And I know that you can supposedly like set the do not track and, and other things like that. But I kind of like this idea of, of the analytics being in house so that it's just for me to improve my content, not for other people to go and, and send more targeted advertisements. Right. Um, so the, you mentioned the tool already. I think it's called Umami. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about like how how does something like that work, just at a at a high level? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so Umami is like pretty cool, and because if, what it does is like it gives you all the data you mentioned, right? You want to see if people mm -hmm. are even visiting your website. Uh, how how many people are reading a particular post, even if you like don't know, who, you don't want to know who they are and stuff like that. So like you can find out what kind of posts are popular. Um, so Umami does that where it collects all this data, but then it doesn't store any cookies. All the data you see is like anonymized. So you can't okay. track the user back. So like that's another like privacy feature they have. And they don't mm -hmm. collect like any personally identifiable information at all, right? And realistically speaking like if you want to use this data to build a better site and like build things that people want to use this information is like enough to like figure out what kind of content you should be putting out and that's what umami lets you do um and apart from like the privacy focused aspect of it right mm -hmm. uh, they they have like a couple of really cool features like when you add a website to umami that you want to track you can generate a share url which can be a public URL. So your site analytics can be public. So if you're looking for sponsors oh, cool. or if you just want to like share stuff, you can give them that link and they can see live the analytics you would see in your dashboard. Uh, oh, which I think that's really cool. Even some of the paid services don't have, right? And yeah. I'd, I'd... Another uh, feature which I really like from Umami is you can like, uh, apart from like tracking multiple sites, your self-hosted mm -hmm. instance can have multiple accounts. So like if you have friends who are like not very tech savvy, you can create an account for them on your instance and they can like track their sites there. So like gotcha. it's just like setting up one account and like multiple people can use it. Gotcha. Okay. So that makes sense. Um, and, and so to deploy one of these, you need a, it's, is it, it's built in node, I assume. It is, it is. Yeah, it's a Next.js uh, thing. Yeah, I think it just uses okay. Next.js API routes. It's I don't think they even oh, have cool. like the backend okay. thing. I could be wrong. Yeah. Interesting. So so um, we're going to deploy this as a long-running node server um, mm -hmm. so that it is up all the time. 
Um, but it sounds like you could potentially deploy it on serverless functions or something like that as well. I think so. It uses a database. So if you're doing serverless, you probably need something like with uh, some like PG bouncer sort of thing. It supports sure, MySQL sure. as well. So maybe like you can use something like planet scale. I'm not sure. We, gotcha. The one okay, the cool. one we'll be tackling today will like use Postgres, uh, like the umami right. with Postgres sort of flavor. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So um, I think at, at this point, probably the easiest thing to do is just start showing people how it works. So let's switch over into our pair programming view which I will do with this button here, camera two. All right, um, so now we get, <laughs> I just saw that Chris's joke about hearing the paint dry. Yes, yes, that is exactly <laughs> yeah. it. Um, but yeah, so we are live and we have uh, Ashley here today from White Coat Captioning, taking down everything we say. So thank you very much, Ashley, for being here. That is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX and Backlight all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people, which means a lot to me. It also allows me to do some of the more inventive stuff that we do on the show, some of the, the interactivity and things, all funded by your generous sponsorships and by your subscriptions, chat. Every every dollar that comes in, I reinvest into the show. So I, I very much appreciate all the, the subs and the, the sponsorships, all those good things, because it lets us just get weird, right? Uh, we are talking to uh, Faraz today. You can find Faraz on the internet, on Twitter. Um, and I forgot to mention, if you want to look at those captions, the captions are on the homepage, uh, like they are with every episode. And we're talking today about Railway App. Uh, and I think the last thing that I wanted to bring up was umami.is, which is uh, the analytics that we're going to set up. So uh, that is the extent of what I know about what's going on. So Faraz, what is my next step if I want to start building this app out? Yep. So you can like open a new tab and just type in dev.new. Dev.new. Mm -hmm. Clever. Uh, yep. And now just like you can use your keyboard at this point. You don't really need a mouse. So just do like deploy a starter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just search for Umami, right? Yeah, hit enter. So now you're not logged in and we require users to like log in to deploy code. So it'll ask you to connect your GitHub account. Okay, need to verify my account. Yeah, you have to verify your account. So, so like just so we know you're not deploying shady stuff. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I won't deploy any of that. You got it. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go to the dashboard. Yeah. I guess you also need to agree to the terms and conditions. So we, we want to fix this flow where the user only has to agree to I, like one of these things and not everything. Gotcha. I am I am 13 years or older, uh, despite <laughs> my youthful appearance. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I've, I've agreed. So that means I go back to my dashboard and here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just click new project, which will like take you back to the where I intended you to go to initially. Is, yeah. Oh, is this not the oh, the umami no. that I set up? No, no, no. Because uh, oh, I got you. Okay, so let's... Project, yeah, yeah. Now, you can search for umami from like the root as well. But yeah, now hit enter. Okay. Now this should work because you are logged in. I guess we don't have access to your repos yet. Okay, so we'll put this on learn with Jason, which is where here. Uh, we'll do. Select at least one row. Ah, this is fine. We'll just, here we go. And I got to do one of these. Do one of those. You hackers, okay. you, you dirty so we're hackers. So we're call this. OK. Mm -hmm. So now Umami needs like a hash salt to like hash some values for you. And you can see we have like okay. a little tip there. So you can do like command case secret and click the second option. Yeah. Now just paste that in. So that's like an automatically nice. generated like secret for you. And there are like two environment variables which we've like pre-configured. Um, so Umami by default runs on port 3000. So this template has like pre-configured for you. So you don't need to do it. The host name is like the URL you'll get after deploying your project. Um, so we just like have a templated variable that we're using for it. 
So you can now gotcha. click deploy and it will start creating your project. Ready to be deployed. It is deploying. Mm -hmm. Okay, and is there something I should so this do will... in the... Um, no, uh, I guess what you could do is you could go, if you scroll up slightly, can you do like command enter? Oh. Okay, it, the, the page navigated, but what you can do is you can click the settings thing on the top right. Um, just close, close this uh, box that has opened up. So like your deployment will begin automatically. You can see that we provisioned like a Postgres database for you as well, which this will use. Mm -hmm. And your deploy will now start as well. So in the meantime, you can click settings. Okay. Uh, actually, my bad. You can close the settings. You can click the, <laughs> right. the Umami service and go to the... Uh, so click Umami, go to the settings in here. Yeah. Gotcha. And if you scroll down, um, I want to show you something really cool. So one is like, okay, so we created... Learn with JSON Railway Umami for you, right? Right. And it is linked to the upstream repo, Mike Cow Umami. So like now whenever Mike updates his version of Umami, you just have to click this one button and you don't have to worry about going to GitHub, doing anything, right? And when that we very update clever. this for you, we don't replace your production deployment because you could have made changes to learn with JSON Umami, which might break mm -hmm. things. So we create like a PR deploy for you. And once you're happy with the PR deploy working properly, you can just merge that PR and your production deployment is replaced. Love it. Right? And one other reason I brought you here is if you go back to like where it shows you the repos and click on your uh, Railway Umami thing. Although I don't think this will have the instructions. So let me actually real quick share a link with you. We should probably have like a better way to access this link. Um, but if you could go here real quick. Okay. It so has like link. instructions on how you would proceed. So Umami is like one of the few starters that, rep uh, that require some additional configuration. So you can see okay. you click the railway button, you added the hash salt, and now we are on step three, right? So we have uh, the learn with JSON Umami thing. What we're going to do next is that uh, I'm assuming you're not, you've not installed the Railway CLI. So I we'll don't install believe that I have. Let's find out. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we can install that. I think you can use the shell script that works the best, if I remember correctly. So not not Homebrew. You you can also use Brew. I personally just use the shell one. Okay. If that uh, I'm going to use brew just right. because I I, yeah. I will absolutely lose track of this if I don't. Um, yeah, that's true. that's okay. I I've realized mm -hmm. after a few uh, <laughs> I think we're at almost 300 episodes of this show that <laughs> I've installed so many things that I I accidentally made my computer unusable and had to spend like a half a day <laughs> going in and cleaning up all the miscellaneous things I'd installed. So now I'm like mm, maybe let's do it this way. Uh, okay, so now I should have railway. There it is. Perfect. And I've got so my railway you... version. Mm -hmm. Good. Now we can clone the repo that Railway created for you, for okay. like Umami. Railway Umami is what we called it. Okay, let's move in. And uh, now you can go back to your Railway project. To, to this railway project? Yes. Close the okay. service. And on the bottom left, you'll see an option to set up your project locally. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, just click okay. the connect your project, connect to this project thing. So what, what we are doing here is we are linking our local repository to the railway project. And this is the project ID, which yes. matches what's in the URL there. Yes. So now, oh, I'm not oh, logged you, in. You Let's need log to log in. in. Yes. Press enter to open the browser. Success. Okay. Yes. Nice. That's a good. So now that, you can that, run that nice and... railway status. Oh, oh yeah. We have to link first. No, that's fine. We, we had to link first. Yeah. 
Cool. So now that's the name of your project. It has one plugin and one service, right? Uh, gotcha. Now we can go back to the GitHub repo to see the remainder of the instructions. Yeah. So now this is a command I will ask you to run off stream because okay. we'll be revealing some environment variables. So gotcha. what you need to do is you can see like, so it's minus H host name. If you go back, uh, yeah. So like you'll replace like the host name, username, database name values. And mm -hmm. you don't need to go back to the website. On the CLI, you can just run railway variables and that will show you those values. But do that part off stream, like off gotcha. stream. Gotcha, okay. So, so yeah. the command just, is railway variables. And then when I yes, execute which this, will it's going to me all the values. Yeah, which will reveal okay. like uh, the Postgres configuration values. And then you can just gotcha. paste in the railway run command and like replace the relevant values. Railway run PSQL H, and then I got to copy this host name. And that is the PG host value, right? Yes. So and PG host, PG user, PG DB, I think. Username, PG user. And then I need my uh, database name, and that is PG database. Okay. And then I need to set the file, and that's going to be the SQL schema Postgres. And just make sure I have all that correct. Yes. Hit enter to run it. Invalid option U. What did I screw up? Oh, capital U. Capital U, yeah. That's, that always gets me. Running again. All right. So. Now that we've done that, Great. it has done all the things. I'm not going to scroll up in case I accidentally share some variables, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks like it worked. Mm -hmm. So now we can go back to our railway project, click on uh, this one. Yeah, click on the Postgres thing. Okay. And you can see uh, like uh, the tables have been populated for you, right? Oh, uh, cool. That's okay. what that's what the script we just ran did. Gotcha. Um, now you can click on the Umami service and visit like the URL, which should populate. Yeah, just click that URL. Uh, you can click. So the I think credentials are listed on GitHub. It's like Umami and password or something. No, uh, to the repo where the instructions were. Yeah, so it's admin and Umami. Okay, so admin, Umami. I need to go and change that password. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you want to change that ASAP, I think. <laughs> yeah. Edit. Okay. Okay. So now we have a, a new password, so that you mm -hmm. chat aren't going to come after me and and mess with us. We learned that lesson. Um, so we're in, so yeah, that, we got the thing. that's it. We can, we can go, go home now. Do us, do our stuff. You so I'm, I'm hackers, thinking. you, you uh, dirty yeah, hackers. Umami, umami is set up. Uh, now we can deploy like a swell tab or a next JS app. And then we'd add that as a website here and add tracking to that application. Got it. Okay. So we need to, we also yeah. need to set up a, a next app then. Yes. So we can okay. just set up like a basic Next.js app and add like a couple of pages. Okay, so let's uh, make a directory. We'll call this railway Next.js and then we'll move and into there's it. And there's a question in uh, chat as well about where the Postgres is hosted. Uh, so the Postgres is also hosted on railway and all our servers at the moment are US West. Uh, we do plan to have like multi-region support, uh, but that's a little, little far away. At the moment, start learning. Create next app. There we go. Wait a minute. You're going to do that here, aren't you? I want you to do it in this directory, please. Yes.
right. Here we go, here we go. Okay, so now we have a um, basic app set up here. So let's change out our pages. We'll do something simple like, uh, let's see if we can keep that container. And we'll say this app has public analytics, right? And then we can kind of do the same thing. Um, and put that in there. Let's drop out the rest of this stuff because we won't need it. Uh, we don't need a footer, so we can drop that. And all right, so that's a basic site. And then let's add maybe one more page here. And that page will just be a copy pasta. We'll call it about. And we can update this to say about this site. And here we'll say this site is an example using on me to uh, manage self-hosted okay we can clean up that a little bit more but in the meantime that's gonna give us plenty of uh, of goodness to work with and I think if I look at the package JSON we can run npm run dev make sure that the site works the way that we expect so let's uh, copy this and head out to our browser. This app has public analytics. Great. Let's go to about. And we've got an about site. Perfect. OK. Um, so I guess uh, what we need to do next is we need to deploy this site on Railway as well. So we get like a URL for the okay. site that we can tell okay. Umami about, right? So, All right. We so can do let me one of, just like, yeah, you can create a Git repo. And then we can just deploy that repo, right? So we'll do one of those, and then we can do a GitHub repo create. And I'm going to grab this. Oh, I have to make it public. There we go. And I think we need to go. So we'll get remote. What is it? GitHub remote add origin. And we'll say. Uh, Get at github.com, learn, I think I've got a copy pasted, dot git, uh, good. And then we're going to git push origin main. All right, so there is our app. Good deal. Cool. So, okay. so let's, let's try then, a, like a relatively new feature, right? Just copy the git URL, like the GitHub URL of your project. Got it. Go to your railway project. Go to this railway project. Uh, close the Umami service. Just do Command K. No, no, you don't. Oh. You don't need to go out. Command K. Go back into the project. This one. Yeah. Just do Command K and paste your GitHub URL. Yeah. Now deploy. Oh, cool. Is this, uh, did y'all build this in house or is this command bar? No, we build this in house. Nice. This is good. Yep. All right. So it's initializing. Yeah. So this should start deploying basically the next JS app. And you can see, like, you didn't, you didn't have to do anything, right? You just gave us the URL mm -hmm. and we'll figure the rest out, like the repo URL. And yeah. we like intelligently like figure everything else out. So you can see Very we cool. already have the the URL that your app will be deployed on. So we can copy that while this builds and proceed like with the rest of the stuff. So I think if you um, go out of the deployments, like if you scroll up a little bit and go to all deployments, where it says all deployments, I think you can mm -hmm. okay. So the URL isn't quite visible, I guess, till the deployment is completed. 
Uh, it's on the left. So I don't know if you can copy it from there. Or we can just uh, wait for like 10, 10, 15 seconds till it deploys. Here. Oh, yeah, you can copy it from there. Yeah. Yep. And okay. we can go to where we deployed Umami. Go to where we deployed it. So here. Yeah, this one. So add website and name and domain. I think you have to remove the HTTPS or it will keep shouting at you. And this is the share URL thing. So if you enable share URL, we can like have a live link for people to look at later. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And then hit okay. save. Yep. Now you can go, you can, uh, I guess you can go, there's like a link icon you can see. Here? Uh, no, not share URL. What, what about the next one? Yeah, get tracking code. So we need to okay. copy this to clipboard. Oh, yeah, there's a button for that. Great. Mm -hmm. Go back to our next app. And I guess we need to do the, uh, oh, yeah, we can, do we need document.js or can we just put it in here? I always That forget. is a really good question, and I don't know the answer. Maybe. Um, the docs probably have it. Yeah, let's go here. And I think adding a document.js will be the best. Option. So, like, just do, like, document. Custom document. Custom document. There we go. Yeah, just copy paste this stuff gotcha. in there. Default is going to be into uh, where do I put this? It's underscore pages document, underscore. It? Yeah, the root root of the pages directory. Okay, drop this uh, in and so then under and head. In... I guess doing it in the head tag might make more sense. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, we can we can leave it here. Sure. That's fine. Let's see. no, we can we can put it in the head, right? I and I just put like so, I think. Oh, can can we do that? I'm, I I don't know. Let's try sorry. and find out what we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's run this. And now, if I come back out to my site, and I try to load it. Did it, let's load again. It did, in fact, Wait. load umami.js. Mm -hmm. So let's let's just commit this, right? Like add yeah. and commit it. Whoops. It commit feature add umami for analytics. Push that now, up. And this then should come back hopefully trigger a new deployment for you. There we go. So when you when you give uh, like a GitHub URL and we create mm -hmm. the uh, deployment, like the real. So uh, just like to get you accustomed to the terminology, the bigger picture is like the railway project, right? Each individual thing within the project is a service. So okay. Postgres is like a plugin, but like Railway Next.js and Umami are like plugin. Uh, sorry, services within your project. Gotcha. So that's like the terminology. I, I guess I've been using it, but I didn't really tell you what I what I mean when I say those things. And if you go to the settings for Railway Next.js. Settings. You can, you can scroll down and you can see like where this pulls from, right? Yeah. So there's like the service name and like the source repo. So whenever you push. And, and since this one's not repo, a fork. Or I mm -hmm. guess it, so. The the syncing that we got with Umami, where it showed the the upstream repo, um, we use the next starter, but it's not a railway starter, and so because of that, we don't get the the upstream link, which makes sense because mm -hmm. like when you use a no. next starter, it's not I, like I don't want to not those exactly. Changes, right? Okay. So it, so the the upstream repo stuff is not exclusive to railway starters. If some okay. so your repo is public, right? So if I were right. to copy this GitHub URL and deploy it in my railway account or GitHub account, I would get the upstream repo. And then whenever you update your project, gotcha. it would like give me that update option. And, and so is that set as a, like if my repo is a fork of another repo, you set up that upstream tracking? Or is it if I have railway fork the repo for me, you set up the upstream tracking? 
if if you have railway fork the repo for you okay gotcha gotcha cool and okay. the reason the reason for that is um, we 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 thought about this for a bit uh, if you use a github fork you can only fork a repo once mm -hmm. you can't make your github fork private you might want to make your project private right um, and there okay. were like a couple of other reasons so what we do for you is we automatically check for updates once every 24 hours Okay. Uh, if you are aware there's an update and we haven't checked, you can click like the check for updates button that was there in the Umami thing. Yep, um, yep. And we just like, it works exactly as you think a fork would, where we pull from upstream, we create a branch and we push to that branch. And then there's like a pull request in your GitHub repo. Gotcha. But we just don't use the GitHub feature for folks. Gotcha. Okay, great. So let's see. So now I have this app. And if I go into my elements, I look in the head, we should see our umami script in here somewhere. Where did Google Tag Manager come from? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering that as well. Um, where's my umami script? Here. So here is there my is, yeah. umami script. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to uh, where we've deployed umami, we should already see some data. So if you click the real time okay. button at the top, I think, yeah. There hey, you hey. All right, y'all. So go, uh, go hit this, and also welcome Ben. Um, thanks, Ben and friends, for showing up. It's good to see you. Uh, what we have done thus far, just to recap, everyone, is we're using Railway today, and we have set up a an instance of Umami, and Umami is. Uh, self-hosted analytics with a, a kind of privacy angle um, where we get anonymized data. It's not shared with third parties and, and all those good things. Uh, we also deployed a basic next starter. We did the create next app and then um, updated it to have two pages. So we've got this home page here and then we have our about page. And these are our two pages. Uh, and we've instrumented that with Umami by dropping in to the next head this script that hits our Umami instance hosted on Railway. So this is the Umami instance on Railway. And so we can see the, the data here. Um, and we can see also like unique visitors, page views. So this is also kind of cool, like three unique mm -hmm. visitors, 10 page views. Uh, we've got somebody refreshing the page a bunch, which I appreciate. Uh, that gives us <laughs> yeah. real data. I think you can scroll um, and there's like a bunch more info as well. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Real-time logs. Somebody from Argentina. Very cool. Um, Switzerland. This is fun. The United States. Uh, this is, I mean, this is really fun, right? Like here, this is me because I, we, I'm the only person <laughs> in the world who uses Edge. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so we, we get a good map of like where people are coming from and all these good things. And if we come over here, we can find Switzerland. There's our one visitor. Here's Argentina with our one visitor, three people from the U S one from Canada. This is like, this is fun, right? This is really, really yep. fun. And then, uh, Faraz, I assume that's you that, that just popped in. Yeah. From that's the, me the UAE. just typing in the URL real quick, smashing on my keyboard. Here's so a fun question. <laughs> can I find UAE on a map? And I think the answer, I think you'll have to zoom very in. Very obviously. No. Where the heck is it? It's right here, isn't it? It's a little to the right. If you zoom in, I think I don't think you'll be able to find it like this because it's like tiny. But yeah. Oh, it's tiny. So am I just like yeah. right on top of it? Maybe yeah. it's not right no, here. Go lower. Little to the left. Ah, left there left. it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was definitely I was definitely on the wrong you, body. You'd water. never have found it unless you zoomed in. <laughs> Okay, so now that I know where it is, it's right here. Okay, perfect. So, I mean, this is fun, right? And, and you can see, and it's updating in real time. So we can see now somebody from Mexico is tuned in. Like, this is really, really fun to see. Um, and, oh, if I had scrolled up or down, it would have zoomed without me having to manually do it. So, I mean, a lot of fun to be had here, right? You can you get a lot of data. And I think if I look at this, this is a page view. And then these are unique visitors. And there's not a lot of information about who these people are there's just information that is useful but not like private so 
where exactly. did they come from? That's useful. If I, all of my users are from Germany, then having content that's not in German feels silly. Uh, and knowing what browsers people use is really, really helpful. Uh, knowing what operating system they use is also helpful. It helps me determine where to test. Uh, you know, all good stuff, very good stuff. And then we've got which pages are, somebody hit a, a fake page, love it. <laughs> um, but this is, I mean, this is great, right? Like we're getting really good information uh, without any privacy. And this is all self-hosted. And you mentioned earlier that we can make this public, which I would love to do. Yes. So how I do we do if that? If we go to the dashboard again, to the Umami dashboard, yeah. And let's see, uh, scroll, maybe the settings icon on the right, what, yeah, below. Uh, okay, let's share URL. Oh, no, no, you were in the right place, yeah. Oh, the okay. share URL. link icon, yeah. Okay. Yep. So I think so even if, if you like open this, this in the new tab or like share it in chat, it should, everyone should be able to see this information. Cool, all right. So everybody should yeah. be able to see this if they want. And we can go back into our next site and say, uh, if you want to see these, you can view them at this link. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got that. And we should probably put in, um, I'm just gonna do this a very like, quick and dirty way, but we will link to the home page and then we'll duplicate that and link to the about page so that. I think you should be using like the next link oh. component. Yeah. Link from next. Right. And, and then you it's... want like an A tag inside the link. Okay, and here's my Perfect. link. Okay. And a link. No, it's happy. Okay. So then if I npm run dev here just to make sure that it's not unusably mm -hmm. weird. Home page. Oh, they stripped Mike the wants some space out. in That's between. Odd. Yeah, okay, so let's add some space. So we can, do I wanna try to style this? Um, I'm not gonna try to style this. So instead I'm gonna do the very like reacty thing of, of putting a space in like this. And then in both of these, I'm going to just add a quick style object and say, um, we'll do color blue and text decoration underline because we want our links to look like links. That's a little better. And then maybe we can add just a tiny bit of our top, right? See, I said I wasn't going to style it and I started styling it. Sorry, everyone. Let's go with uh, to rem. Perfect. Now we've got usable things. So let's copy paste this over to our about page as well so that we can navigate back and forth. Go. And so I now think you need to import just... the link tag in the about page. Do... Yeah, let me grab that. And then I can get rid of that. Come up here. Good. So now we can navigate back and forth. And when we go to here, oh man. See, this is, okay. So <laughs> let's fix the inaccessible links and that is going to be on the home page. I can just copy paste this style. And we'll do it like this. Now we've got a link. Ta da! Okay, so let's, uh, let's commit and push that. So uh, feature will add nav plus public analytics link. Okay, so we can get push. And if we head back over railway, we'll see that this is now deploying. Nice. Yep. Cool. All right, so we got good things going on here. We're uh we're we're building, I would say, a pretty like a pretty full featured app. 
um, in terms of like the, the basic structure of like, we've got analytics, we've got things like that. Um, so we can watch that. What else? Let's see. We, uh, is there anything else that you wanted to, to dive into here or showcase? Yeah, I want to show like one more thing, right? So now you've created, so we've um, generally like I've noticed what you do with your streams is like you share links to the repos so people can like test mm -hmm. them out. They can deploy them mm -hmm. on their own. They can like have the same experience and learn, learn those things, right? So we can take this one step further with Railway. So how you deployed Umami was like you used a template we created and it was mm -hmm. super easy for you to get going. So now what we can do is this project that we are looking at, we can convert that into a template so people can use it, right? Oh, so cool. whoever deploys okay. that template will get Umami plus the next JS service with analytics already built in. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So just close the Railway next JS service. Uh, go to settings. So these are your project settings now. And if you scroll down, you can see generate template from project. And this created a project, a, a template for you. So you can edit the template name, which by default is like the project name. So you can call it like okay. whatever you'd like. JS app with mommy analytics. Mm -hmm. We'll have to do like a little more work here. Yeah. Is it, does it need to be like kebab case? No, like it this, does or not. Can you do it? No, you can do Let's... like a normal string as well. Yeah. Perfect. We need to do like a couple of more things. So if you edit the Umami service, uh, so what we do here is when we create the template for you, we don't, we take the environment variables, but we don't take the values because your values could be secrets, right? So mm -hmm. we'll have to configure like the port. So if you click that little edit button and set default to like 3000 and then click update variable, uh, do the same with like host name. Uh, so you can do uh, was... like the curly brace thing. Yeah. Yeah. What was uh, it? Railway static URL. Okay. Yep. Update variable. And then and this one then we want to leave empty, right? Yes. We just want to leave that as an empty. And just update service on the okay. left. Yep. And you can see Postgres is ticked. So like it will deploy Postgres for them. Our next JS service did not have any environment variables. So we don't need to configure them. And you can just click update template. Okay. So now it has taken you to like your account settings where you can see all your templates. You have a referral mm -hmm. code, which you can attach to any template link. If you like uh, turn the radio button off, you can like get, you'll get a link without the referral code, which you can share with people. Uh, gotcha. You can, you can close this tab, close this modal so, and we can like reopen it, but you can, see that all your templates will be listed here. You'll get analytics on like how many people have deployed it when you like share the link with people. So mm -hmm. if you want, like you can attach basically this link and people can just um, like deploy the whole thing at once, right? Gotcha. That's cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you can even visit the template uh, to see what it looks like. So if you click on the template name, you can do that as well. Oh, yeah, so you cool. can see okay. this starter includes two GitHub services, which is like one is Umami code base and one is our Next.js app and one database, which is Postgres. And people just have to configure it. So like you have the same name. That's why it's like giving the name error. But mm -hmm. you can see that you just like whoever deploys this just has to enter the hash salt and they're good. Yeah. To go. That's cool. This is very cool. Um, okay. Oh, so well, someone, someone's already deployed it once. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Nice, very cool. I, I mean, I love like this is this is very cool to see because what I like about this is um, it it scratches an itch that's even a little higher level than just like push to deploy, right? It's um, it's mm -hmm. very cool that you're able to do like a suite of services and say you know it's it, like I want to deploy a. Uh, a website, but my website needs an API and I don't necessarily want to put all of that in the same repo, but also it's nice to be able to just click the button and deploy all of that together. So this is, this is a really nice, uh, I, I like this a lot. 
Yep. And like this is this is sort of where we see railway going in the future, right? You let's say you want to build a video calling app, but you mm-hmm. want a marketing site, you want a blog, you probably want like an uptime monitor, you want analytics. You can just do command K, type analytics. We'll show you all the analytics options we have. You can do like well in the future, not right now. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> uh, I got you, I like got you. that's that's where I think analytics should still work. You're you're not inside a project, which is why it's not showing up. Uh, but mm-hmm. like when you're in a project and you're looking for services, we want you to be able to like just smash anything on the keyboard and we'll give you our best guess of what we think you should be seeing. So like it can be a gotcha. blog, a marketing site, it can be an API server, a GraphQL service or whatever. So I, I do have um, a, a question about mm-hmm. how um, we have this URL here, which is mm-hmm. my deployed instance. That's currently hard coded in here. Yes. So, so we can make I back an to environment make it, variable. Yeah. So can can we walk because because uh, just to walk through the whole process before we build it, um, this needs to be a environment variable that we need to pull out and configure for this site. So when I look at my dashboard here, this needs an environment variable that relies on the production environment of this one. So mm-hmm. how is, is that something that we can actually do as part of the railway deployment or is there going to be a little bit of, of manual config here? So there will be manual config at the moment. So right now, okay. uh, services can only pull variables from plugins, uh, but something we're going to tackle like in the next couple of months is like, so you you probably at some point also want like project level variables, right? You define variables mm-hmm. on the project and all services in the project pull them. You might want some services that only communicate with each other, but not the public internet. Um, right. And like they, they should be talking to each other. So like those are the things we want to tackle, like let's say in the next quarter or so. Um, but mm-hmm. right now what you'd have to do is it your first deploy would kind of be broken because you don't have the URL yet. And once your first deploy is completed, you can update that environment variable and your analytics will start working. Right. Um, and Tony is asking in the chat, if we deployed the next app to Netlify and Umami to mm-hmm. Railway, it would still work, right? That would work, yes. Very yes. cool, yeah. So, and the great thing about that is that we're, we're basically saying, you know, this URL. And my guess is that somewhere in the Umami settings, we can do something like, uh, like only allow, and, and what we're saying is we're only allowing events from this site, right? Yes. Yes. Got it. So somebody couldn't go in and, and like spam our analytics or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But this is, yeah, and this like, is. Um, that's another like cool thing about Umami where like your tracking code is your self-hosted URL, right? Mm-hmm. Because if if you were using something like GA, a lot of uh, ad blockers or like browsers like Brave will block it because they know what the link is going to be. But like here, your link is sort of like your host name where you've deployed it. So ad mm-hmm. blockers can't really block that either. Gotcha. Yeah. And so th- this is one of those things that's always kind of interesting, right? Because it's it's like ad blockers are there to keep people from getting their data sold and and traded for for Mm -hmm. targeted ads so there's a like analytics i don't know it's always such an ethical weird like the the ethics of this right because seeing what people use and i have literally no idea who it is except for you know obviously tony who's who's just billboarding (laughs) right now um (laughs) but uh the the like that information allows me to improve the content of the site which is why i think you see um that request for like hey will you share anonymous telemetry so we can improve our service that's useful right and and people can still opt out of it uh with analytics it's a little less like I don't necessarily want Google to have a lot of my data. I mean, I know they already have it all and they'll find a way to get it even if I say no. But the that feeling of like, well, I'm, I'm not really comfortable sharing like the behavior of myself on the web. I'd like to opt out of those yep. analytics. So an ad blocker lets you do that, right? Um, but 
being able to to get that information in a way that's not exposing anything private is super useful for me as a as a developer. I don't know. This is like a we could have a whole panel on this, like the ethics yeah. of anonymous yeah. data, right? Um, but yeah, it's a little, it's it a little is nice tricky. To know. We've we've had this uh, we've had this conversation internally as well as we've tried to like get more data and build features that users want at Railway. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I guess what we ended up deciding in the end is like even though we use like privacy focused tools for analytics. If a user wants to opt out, like we should respect that, and yeah. we didn't like try to work around it, sort of. And you can it, also like do if you want like feature based stuff. You can also do uh, your tracking on the back end with tools like Heap hmm. or like Segment, where you're not keeping like user data, but only like project created, service created, right? Plugin created and stuff like that. So, Right. And now that sort of stuff, I think, you know, you, you need that information. You need to know what people are using on your, your site. Um, the, mm -hmm. the specifics of where people are, things like that, that matters a little bit less. Um, yes. So what I, what I think is really interesting here is that, you know, we're what, maybe 45 ish minutes into actually coding and we've managed to set up a, a, our own analytics service using them umami that's deployed it's running and we were able to build and deploy this next site that is also deployed and running and sending that data to railway or to umami um and we can see that happening now where you know here's the the data that's coming from me and if i click this link this is public so people can see how many people are looking and, and you can see two people have this window open right now, or it might be me opening mm -hmm. it twice, but either way we've got I think that. It's, it's uh, two people on the actual website. So like this website. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. Not how many people are looking at the, yeah, yeah. the analytics. Yep. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is like, it's really cool to be able to see that like there's a, a public URL. I can share what's going on with my site. Somebody can go in and just take a peek at what's going on with the, you know, the, the, different setup this uh yeah today last 24 hours um and you know there's no real time here but it's still very useful to just be able to go in and look at i mean this i love this this is uh it's so nice <laughs> to be able to do this sort of thing um because like i always want to share this this kind of information because i just think it's cool to to let people see what's going on in, in various apps. I think the build in public thing is really cool. I love that, that, uh, early stage founders do the, the like mm -hmm. radical transparency about metrics and stuff to, to make the journey a little less daunting for people who have never done it before or are doing it at the same time. Um, so that, you know, but like, I'm not going to build this. There's no way I'm going to go build like some kind of stats aggregator that I can turn into a dashboard and make, like, I'm just never going to do it. So it's really nice that we were able to build this so quickly using open source software. Yep. Okay. So we have analytics up and running using Umami. Umami is very cool. Here's our public URL. Here's our, our private dashboard where we've got a little bit more. We've got the real time. We've got uh, some settings where we can mess with some stuff. Uh, looks like I can create accounts for people if I need to so that other folks can come in and see it. Um, I've got my own profile here where yeah, it's set to my time zone and all those good things. Ooh, there's a dark mode. Look at that beauty. Um, and so then we've got our public next site, which is out here somewhere. Here it is. And that's given us the ability to navigate back and forth. Um, we would, as we build this out, all the pages will automatically have that snippet injected because we put it in the document. So we don't have to remember to add analytics. It just works. And I saw that Umami also supports events. So there's some mm -hmm. things that, um, actually, do we have time to set up an Umami event? I have never done it, but we can figure it out. I want to, I want to try it. Okay. Let's try an event. Yeah. yeah. Right. I want to see how this works. So using CSS class, that's all you have to do is add a CSS class or JavaScript. We can do, we can do either. Button on click umami window dot umami is just oh. there. Okay. All right. Let's just try. Yeah. Let's just try this. This is going to be great. 
So uh, do you, do you want to do, to do uh, the CSS way instead? Because next might give you problems with the window element if it's like doing SSR. Oh, uh, good. Yeah, good point. Okay, so we can do yeah. this one. Umami click sign up button. And what we will do down in here is we want to see if somebody wants to look at the public URL. So we can add a class name. And our class name will be click public analytics, right? And then if we go out here, we'll get Do, do you also everything. need an ID? There was something about an ID, although I'm not sure if that's necessary or if it was a suggestion. An ID. But that's just an example. Button. Just add the class. Yeah, so I think. When the user clicks this button, mommy will be any it. JavaScript event. So click record an event named sign yeah. up button. Mm -hmm. I think that should do it. Good. OK, great. So then we are going to say feature um, send events for public analytics clicks. All right, so let's push. And we'll wait for this to build, which should happen nice and fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we're doing that, is it where where else should people go? Like, are there um, resources or or communities or anything that you want people to be aware of for if they're oh, yeah. if they're checking out railway stuff? Yep. So you can go to like Discord.gg/railway, which is our Discord community. Uh, I think it's linked at the bottom in the footer. Here we go. So Discord, we've got yeah. Discord. Mm -hmm. And we, we have documentation at like docs.railway.app. Uh, yeah, we have the docs. Railway.app. Now it's the CLI. So here's docs.railway.app, just straight up. We also have a blog at blog.railway.app where we have like tutorials on deploying some of this uh, some of the starters we have like a really nice post about like how we work at railway um, how mm -hmm. the whole team functions working like async remote um, so that's pretty cool if you want to check that out uh, but yeah these uh, discord is probably the best place to find us the entire team is on there we do all our um, so users who are on the railway team plan the teams that use railway are in the same discord so they just ping us if they need help Got it. So we, we've got a bunch of cool stuff going there. Where did my class name go? Did your did thing you deploy? I thought so. Here it is, class. Oh, yeah, there it okay, is. OK, so there's our class. So if we click this, ta-da, then if we go in here, we should see real time. Let's look at events. Click oh, public. There we go. Nice. I mean, that is, okay, I'm going to say Umami team, such great work. Like, that is so easy. Um, I didn't have to add extra JavaScript. It just worked. And it, I, like, th this is nice. It's very nice to be able to do this sort of thing. Because just these little bits of instrumentation are so helpful um, in seeing kind of what's going on. So if I, if I filter down to my, see, I'm in my real time. And see my my see just page views here. We've got refers, we've got pages, good. Um, and then we've got all of this data. So really cool to be able to see like where people are coming from, what pages they're looking at, what events they're looking at. Um, and you can also see like which pages are most popular. And we get that with a range of data. So when we go out here, we can see back to all time or different date ranges. So this is really slick, right? Let, let's get into mm -hmm. the dashboard. And I want to see events be somewhere down here. All right. So here's our event. So we can yep. also see if we've got things instrumented, like what are the most popular events, right? Um, so if you all want to go actually click this link, um, oh yeah, the dev.new was also very slick. Yep. You, um, if you want to set up a new railway project, the dev.new, that's, that's nice. Um, yep. and, and a small reminder, like you don't, you don't even need an account, right? If you're deploying a plugin, you can just deploy it without an account and we keep it up for seven days and you can just come back and claim it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So really, really cool stuff going on here. I mean, we've got, uh, we've got, a, we covered a lot of distance in a very short span of time. And so we've yep. got real time analytics. I'm not touching the keys and we can see those events coming in. Um, we have a running next app deployed and up on the web. We have a uh, self-hosted analytics up and on the web, uh, public URL for viewing that. We've got the ability to update either of those services with a, a push to Git. Um, yeah, just really, really solid all around. So uh, for us, where should people go if they want to keep up with you? I'm going to drop your Twitter again. My Twitter, yeah. Or the Railway Discord where I hang out the whole day. So it, that, that, that works too. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, I think then we're going to call this one a smashing success because this is this is probably one of the the more advanced builds we've done in inside of the uh the short amount of time that we have on the show so very very impressed with the the amount of things we're able to get up and running and connected um huge props to the mommy team for putting together great analytics that were so easy to deploy uh props to the railway team for making those starters cool <sighs> good good stuff so let me do another shout out to our live captioning. We have had Ashley here from White Coat Captioning all day, taking everything we say down, very much appreciated. That's made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and Backlight, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. Um, while you are checking out things on the site, make sure you go and look at the schedule. We've got some really good stuff coming up. So uh, next week... We are going to build and deploy a React app from a mono repo. And I've scheduled a few more things that I will try to get up by the end of this week so that you have them on your schedule. Uh, you can get those instantly added if you add this Google Calendar link. That doesn't give you notifications. It just lets you know when things are happening, puts them on the calendar. You can also follow on Twitch or head over to YouTube and subscribe there to make sure that you never miss an episode. For us, any, uh, any parting words for the chat? Um, just go to dev.new and build cool stuff, I guess. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. All right, y'all. We are going to go and raid Alex Trost. So buckle up. Uh, Faraz, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We will see you all next time.